All right, guys, good old boy 32 here. Check it out. So I'm out here at the range, and we've got this Palmetto State Armory. This is their 224 Valkyrie. It's a 20-inch barrel, 416 stainless steel, 1 and 7 twist. we got to do a proper break-in of this barrel. Now, the only reason I'm doing this is because a lot of people have asked my opinion, and I say this <laughs> perfectly. It is my opinion on how to break in a barrel properly. What's the purpose of breaking in a barrel? Well, the purpose of it is to remove any and all manufacturing debris, oil greases from the inside, tooling oils, those kind of things from the inside of this barrel to provide it a perfect clean surface for that first round goes through, all that stuff's gone. Because what happens if you've got a piece of steel or something, a uh, shredded piece of, I don't know, anything, it could permanently scar the interior portion of the landings and grooves of this barrel. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is not good on a rifle that you want to have some type of precision element. A lot of people may disagree and think that, well, I'll just take my guns out there and blast them. Well, that's perfectly okay, but for some people, they want to do this. Now, is a break-in of a barrel written in specifications? Well, it is per, in the military. They do have a mil-spec version. If you watch Tybersaurus Rex, he actually goes through this. But a lot of people will agree that breaking in a barrel is a more of a personal nature. It's how, what makes you feel comfortable. And I'm going to show you how I do. What I typically like to do, I do a cleaning between the first five rounds, and then we shoot five rounds and do a cleaning between each one of those five rounds until we've got probably about 20 rounds down range. That way, I know the barrel's cleaned out, it's ready to go, and we're going to be grouping while we do this. So you guys, here's what we're going to do. So, first step, what I do is I take this barrel, I go ahead and I get a swab. Now, I use a coated cable. A lot of people don't like to use a coated cable, they want to use a fiberglass rod, and I think that's fine. As long as you're not using something that is metal to metal that could shard the inside or abrase that inside of that bore, then I think this is just fine. So what we're going to do, I'm going to take a swab just like this, and we're going to run the first series with the denatured alcohol. Now, the purpose of the denatured alcohol is to go ahead and it will dissolve anything. Just don't drink it. I took, made a mistake of drinking it one time. Don't ask. In any case, so what I'm using is this stuff right here. I picked it up at Walmart. I think it was like $2.50. And what you do is I take it pour it in the rim oil cap right here, and I'm going to soak it and saturate it. And I'm going to bring you through the whole process, but again, what we're going to do is I'm going to do this process, then we're going to shoot it around and go from there. All right, so the reason I'm doing the denatured alcohol first is because I want to make sure we get all the juices out of there. <laughs> and when I say juices, I'm talking about the manufacturing oil. So we'll go ahead and put it in here, and we'll just push that rod out the end of it, just like that and I'm gonna pull it in and hear that noise and there you go so secondly what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take another swab and we're going to run it with the rim oil so we'll go ahead and put and I'm just using old remnants of a, uh, a cotton t-shirt that was laying around and I just saturate this whole thing and what I'm doing is I'm using this also as a supplement to mitigating any type of uh, lubricants or anything else that's up in there. We'll run it through just like this. Ugh, rim oil to the face, nothing better. And there you go. Next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna run the denatured alcohol through it one more time. And like I said, guys, a lot of people are probably sitting there going, you don't have to do all that. Well, you're probably right. But again, that's one of the reasons I said the breaking in of a barrel is very subjective. Uh, Krieger has one way he likes to do it. And I tell you what, a lot of the experts, and I'll follow those, but I kind of add my own little deal here. But again, the very most important part is the very beginning. I'm very excited about taking this guy out. And what that's going to do is that's going to kind of help remove the rim oil as well. So you can see we've got some junk on there. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a dry patch through it, which will, on the next run, be using the rim oil. Then we'll use the denatured alcohol, then another dry patch. And this is going to be tough to pull through because this is a bigger patch. You usually like to cut the patches probably about inch and a half long by about three quarter inches wide. 
and you can hear that go through there. And that's what you're coming out with. And again, like I said, the most important thing is to make sure that there is nothing in that bore when she goes off. Let's see if we can get you a good picture of it. There it is. All right, well, let's put a round through it and we'll go through the next step. I'm not gonna bore you with the rest of it, but here we go, stand by. All right, while we're doing this, we're gonna use this opportunity to go ahead and start zeroing in this scope. Now, again, like I said, what we're gonna be using, and you guys will recognize this guy right here from the 6.5 Creedmoor. This is the Vortex PST Viper 525 50. Here we go, I'm gonna mount it up here, stand by. All right, guys, so we're sitting here. I went ahead and bore sighted this thing, mounted a scope to it. It's, you know, this is not a cantilevered scope mount because it's meant for the 6.5 Creedmoor. Now, today, just to zero it in and break in the barrel, we're gonna be utilizing the American Eagle Valkyrie. This is a 75 grain total metal jacket. Pretty decent stuff. And then, from what I understand, some people are having better luck with this, uh, fi this <laughs> ammunition than they are with, say, the 90 grain uh, Singer Match Keens, which we're gonna use over to 200. So in any case, what we're doing, again, we're gonna break this barrel in. I'm gonna bring you along for the journey so you can see exactly how we're doing it. But again, like I said, uh, at the end of the day, what you wanna do, one round, swab, clean, dry. One round, swab, clean, dry. Do that for five times, and then you go from there. So if you guys have any questions concerning the breaking into the barrel, that's how we do it. So let's go ahead and see where that first round hits. Here we go, put some mirrors on. Once we get it on paper, we'll be doing good. But before we do that, what we need to do is go through the next step and process and getting this thing swabbed out, cleaned, and dried. Stand by. Also, one of the advantages of using the cable is you don't have to break the firearm down 100%. Look at we're getting the copper fouling out of there. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? All right, in the summertime, man, we're out here at 7.30, 8 o'clock, the wind dies around eight. <laughs> See that? That's what we're doing. Well, we're almost on. Okay. One more time. That's four rounds right there, and we'll be almost done. We went, uh, there's a place down where I live. It's got a shooting complex, kind of like this. Sus. If they charge you every time, though, right. it's not a membership. Yeah. Run one more swab and I think we'll be good to go. We'll go ahead and rock out after that. All right, now we run our five consecutive. And what we're doing now is I'm just trying to build up that copper. All right, we're stacking them now. Come left. And basically, guys, that's how we go ahead and break in a barrel. Very simple, very easy. If you guys enjoyed this, if you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already done so. Support the red, white, and blue. God bless America. God bless us men, women in uniform 24-7 for our freedom. Freedom's not free. We're going to continue to roll. We're going to take this thing over. In the next video, we're going to see how accurate it is and see if we can knock out that 1,000-yard, 24-inch gong. You guys have a great day. Go to War 32, out.